What's going on everybody? It's Jay Rich back again with another one. And today we are back out at Atlantic Coast Communications here in Atlanta, Georgia, where we are going to be looking at the Stryker 955 version one versus the version two. Now for you CB nerds, we're not diving too technical in this video here. We're kind of keeping this for the beginner. So we're not going to throw a bunch of technical mumbo jumbo out there and confuse everybody. Now on the outside of the Striker 955, the version two, there's not much change at all. All the change is on the inside and what a change it is. You can definitely see CB is coming up with the times of, of technology. So without further ado, I'm going to quit yapping. If you'll go on ahead and hit that subscribe down there in the corner and uh, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Things like that lets me know that you like this content. So I will produce more of it. All right, let's get after it. All right, so here we are. We are looking at the differences between the 955, the Gen 1, and what people are calling the Gen 2 striker 955 and just looking at the radios this being the gen 2 this being the gen 1 from the outside appearances they are very very similar they're not much difference what you will find new is on the back the vent holes in the top cover as to where the gen 1 does not have them it's very smooth we can look here, we have a seven color display. On the new one, there's an eight color display. We're at 60 watts. Same thing over here, 60 watts. And this has a tone control for transmit and receive. Everything else is relatively the same. I can tell you that the color display is much more vivid on the Gen 2 versus the Gen 1. So let's take these over to the bench, crack them open, and you can see the real difference in the technology that they have put into the Gen 2. So this here is going to be what we're calling the Gen 1 Striker 955. And as you can see, the board goes all the way from front to back, right? And of course, you have your power section here. You're going to have your receiver here. This is going to be the amplifier for your transmitter. And then you've got your echo board in this area, all of the controls for the faceplate. And then, of course, you've got all the ancillary parts to make the faceplate work properly. It's a really nice radio, really. And then, if we move over to the Gen 2, you can see that the board takes up significantly less space in here. Now, they did leave the radio the same size so that they could keep it, you know kind of in conjunction with the way the radios looked in the past um, but this again being the amplifier section here you can see how different it is where this one here has the has the shield here for the RF we're lacking that here I guess they've come up with a way where they don't need to worry about that quite so much but again you have like your echo board section here power supply amplifier the receiver section should be right about here. PLL section is going to be here. And then this should be portion of your transmitter here. And actually, uh, on the 655, you're missing this piece here because this is where the sideband setup is at. So on the 655, lacking sideband, they don't have this here. There you go. All right. Uh, on these radios, one of the quickest way to avoid the warranty is to go ahead and have somebody start spreading these coils back here for you so that the low pass filter doesn't work properly and now all of a sudden you're getting a bunch of extra power the radio doesn't actually put out on channel if you do that you're losing your three-year warranty don't do that <laughs> all right so you see these control pots here yes okay so here we're going to set your modulation limits your dead keys all that sort of thing for the am the fm the upper and lower sideband you know, you've got your uh, high dead keys in this area, your low dead keys over on this side. All of that's right here and readily available and accessible to the technician inside the radio. Okay. If you'll notice, you see none of that anywhere in here. That was going to be my question is, you know, what, 
how do we do this now? How, how do well, you do this without giving away any sort of trade secret or anything? Right. Well, you know, there's a whole procedure that you have to follow, and Stryker was kind enough to tell us how to reset bias and everything. For instance, here's the bias adjustments on the uh, radio f on the Gen 1. Okay. The Gen 2, you have to take these off and use a special resistor. Uh, and go ahead and set it with an external power supply so that you can go through the faceplate actually and set the bias. You don't set it inside the radio, you go through the faceplate. Wow. And your dead keys and modulation are all set through the faceplate too. So wow. if you know how to enter the debug mode, you'll be able to set your dead keys. There you have it. The Striker 955 version 1 versus the version 2. And you see what I mean by not very much aesthetic difference but the internals wow all right so coming up in the next video we are going to be back at atlantic coast communications again uh, we're going to be looking at the striker 955 we are, are going to install this 4700 farad capacitor on the power side we are going to also be looking at the power differences between this stock power cable that you get with this striker versus this aftermarket cable that you can buy for the striker and just a little heads up there is a difference we do free up power so if you have a striker or any other radio that uses this cord you're going to want to watch this video there are also videos in the works of other radios that use this cord we're upgrading we're going to see if we get some power out of a Cobra and a Connex and a Texas Ranger. See if we can free up more power like we did on the Striker. But with those videos coming up, in the meantime, you can check out a playlist. You can also subscribe. But in my playlist, there are plenty of other videos of coax installs, antennas, radios, uh, just uh, different stuff that... Um, that might help you along. But as always, I'm Jay Rich. You keep your D's in the breeze and the shiny side up. We'll be seeing you.